Jay from the Cubs, guys. Welcome back to another episode of 60 Seconds Reanimized. You guys see this truck right here? Uh -huh. This nice, pink, juicy ice cream truck. Well, there are no wheels on that ice cream truck because we have to play through this multiple times in order to get parts to repair that truck. We're going to do another run right now so we can inch closer to getting out of here via that truck. If you guys cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up because here we go. All right, boys and girls, girls and gals, girls and gals. Okay, we're not even going to say boys anymore, just girls and gals. This time we're gonna go on Sarbama for your mama because I'm feeling freaky. Ooh. Like I'm feeling freaky deaky right now. I don't know if it's something in the air or what, but I'm just feeling it right now. I feel like I got the moves in order to get us rescued. And also because maybe we'll get more parts if we do this on a higher difficulty. Now we're gonna play as Ted. Oh my god, I forgot his stars already! Okay, so you're coming with me. And then we're gonna grab one of yous. And what else over here? Oh, another what's that? Don't mind if I do. Okay, we don't have much time to be talking all this crap, guys. So we gotta go, we gotta go. Star Bomber, right? So I gotta get the gun, and I gotta get the axe. Because you never know, we might have to go doop, 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 slice, 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 chop, chop, chop. You don't know who's coming to the bunker on Star Bomber. Okay, give me that. Oh yeah, get that. Some of that. Gotta get the Boy Scout book. Still mad it's not called the Cub Scout book, but you know what? I'll live. We also gotta get my daughter and my wifey. Okay, daughter and wifey, both in the bathroom. Are you joking me? Somebody's freaking joking me. Okay, get this. Come on. Oh, dude, I gotta get my daughter. I gotta get the dot. I gotta get the dot dot. Come on. Come on. Hustle, baby. No. Okay, 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 okay. Get this. One soup. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Okay. Oh, we got this. We got this. Yeah, baby. One soup. Yeah. yeah! Kobe. Okay. So the first run from 60 Seconds Reanimized is on Sarbama. Let the second challenge begin. And you guys might be confused as to why I just said second challenge. It's because I think it's a challenge in order to get the truck parts, the ice cream truck parts. So you guys see right here, we have the truck with no wheels. We got to get some wheels. And let's see what we got here. Two soup and three water. That is unacceptable. All I care about right now is surviving. So what we got to do... We gotta prepare to scavenge. And then yesterday during charades, we learned that Mary Jane doesn't know how to spell anti-establishmentarianism. I hope I said that right. Any smarty pants out there, please correct me if I'm wrong. And it has left Dolores sorely disappointed. She insists on home, or rather shelter schooling Mary Jane a little. Yeah, you know what? She looking like big old Dumbo. Dolores does not mess around. What started out as a spelling exercise has quickly found its way to a math revision, followed by a short physics course and ending on tinkering with random objects in the shelter. Mary Jane looks exhausted, but we can't deny the state of our shelter has improved today. Okay, Ted is really thirsty. You know what? I'm thirsty for those butt cheeks. What am I even saying? Okay, so we're going to send out MVP Timmy without the gas mask. Cross our fingers and come on, Timmy. All right, guys. It's day five. What a time to be alive. You guys already know what time it is. What time? And some soup! I think I drooled a little bit. <laughs> Whoever designed this fallout shelter was a genius, but we can't really tell if that green stuff dripping from the pipe is an included feature. We should probably try to do something about it with whatever we brought down here. We only brought the Boy Scout book, so I guess we gotta open to a few pages, go to the green goo dripping chapter, and just BAM! Day 8. We had thought phone calls were a thing of the past after the atomic bomb obliterated everything in our little town. However, a phone booth on our street survived the bombing somehow. It seems it's ringing right now. Okay, Ted, go answer that. Go work on your social skills. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the twins or a prank call. It's day 9, though, and Timmy is still not back, so I'm very worried. Like, my butthole's real tight right now because I'm scared he's not coming back. When we answer the phone, we heard a gasp of relief from the caller. Okay, so it's going to be the twin ending, but I want to get a part for the truck. So we're obviously not going to get rescued until something happens over there. Mary Jane has been awful silent today. This is very unlike her. Should we try talking to her? Yes. Just start talking to her. You know, she looks real sad. She kind of looks a little mad. I'm frustrated because it's day 10 and Timmy is not back. So I think he's dead, guys. Is he dead? No, no news is good news, but nothing solves problems better than an honest conversation over a hot beverage. We don't have the latter, but talking alone seems to do the trick. Okay, that's good. So we got to give everybody the good stuff, and I'm running out of supplies, guys. This is not good. Playing with matches is never a good idea. Doing so in a tiny underground shelter is probably even lower on the good idea scale. Okay, so there's a fire. I got to save the Boy Scout book because if you guys didn't know, the Boy Scout book can repair every single thing inside the shelter. You just got to give it some time. And Timmy came back, speaking of time. He's paler than ever, and his afro grew. Okay, so we lost the radio. He brought back four cans of soup. Six waters? Oh, my God! And we got a new radio and bug spray? 
Timmy! Timmy is officially my guy. That's his title. Timmy, my guy, whatever your last name is. You're my guy. You are my guy. Like those British people when they knight you. I have knighted you to be my guy. You are my guy. And not like that. Not like that. <laughs> Come on. You guys know. He's my guy as in like my friend. Not my guy as in... Come, you guys know. All right. So my guy gets some of that. Look at all this water in this soup. Oh my god. Me gusta. Ese me gusta. Time to listen to some radio chatter. Don't mind if I do. You know, just snap my finger, do some twos. You know, guys? I'm in a good mood right now. Because Timmy is sick. He might die. But hey, he brought back six waters and four soup. Are you smoking something right now, guys? You all should be more happier than that. Why aren't you happy? We lost the radio. Something blew up inside the radio and the wretched thing caught fire. Okay, let's just, guys, just pretend that didn't happen. All right, guys, I'm playing on Sarbama. I got to get Timmy some help. So what we got to do, we got to prepare to scavenge. And spiders seem to be operating under the assumption that they all have the same rights to the shelter as we do. They're everywhere and don't seem very scared of us. It's time to change that. We don't want any more spiders in our soup. No, sir. Okay, this could potentially be the mutant Mary Jane scenario. I think that we don't do anything. I think that we just take our hands off the mouse and we got mutant Mary Jane, right? Yeah? No! Why? I thought it would be. We decided we could get rid of those spiders with our bare hands, feet, and whatever other body parts we could use for lethal anti-spider attacks. Unfortunately, we've underestimated their chances. They're really fast. All we achieved was getting tired. Maybe we'll have more luck next time. Dang it. All right, whatever. Um, I'm gonna send out Ted because you gotta be a good dad, Ted. Your son's sick. His afro is looking marvelous. And you just gotta keep him alive so we can see that every single day, okay? Day 16. When someone knocked on the door, we were suspicious and cautious. But after a few minutes of talking, it turned out it was just a group of old ladies who were at a tea party not far from here when the bombs dropped. We thought it would only be good manners to talk to them face to face. When we opened the door, those old bats attacked us with their umbrellas, canes, and something that looked like a spiked table leg. We need to fight back. Okay, I kind of want to shoot these old wrinkly ass ladies in the face. But what we're gonna do, we're just gonna lock it. We're just gonna lock it tight, keep them out because sometimes old ladies are super nasty and I don't want to get involved with that. I don't want no problems. We didn't think that a small padlock would stop them, but it turned out to be enough to discourage the unknown attackers. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. The other day, we heard a quiet knock on our door, but when we opened, we only found a suitcase on the doorstep and there was no one around. It isn't signed, but it sure looks like it's meant for us. Should we check what's inside on Sarbama? You got me messed up if you think I'm opening a suitcase on Sarbama? Oh, man, you crazy! You tell local for that! Day 18, a note on our doorstep took us all by surprise. In it, we found a request to bring some supplies to a set location signed. Friends. Friends? What kind of friends? We don't know who these people are, but here's our chance to find out. They're promising to make it worth our while. Should we help them? I think this is part of the twin ending, but I don't remember giving them any soup. How much soup do I have? I have three and a half. Nah, no way. I can't do that right now. Not right now. We gotta figure out what Ted's gonna bring back. Speaking of Ted, by the way, he is finally back, and he's not sick, but he brought back four soup. Yes! Wow. And playing cards. Man, they're bringing back the good stuff. You know what, guys? I gotta take my chance with Timmy. He looks like the guy from It, you know? It's scary. It's been a while since we showered. This smell in the tiny shelter is as far from roses as it can get. We had thought of washing ourselves. Too bad we didn't grab any soup along the way. But maybe we can make do with something else. With this shower scenario, if you don't do it, every single person in the bunker gets sick. I've learned that many times the hard way. So if you guys have an item that you can use, and Timmy's better now. Timmy's not sick, and Mary Jane's hair's long, and pube head's long, and her hair's long. Oh yeah, if you get the shower scenario, make sure you wash your nasty ass. Day 24, we could really use some more supplies. We counted all of them today and the numbers did not make us happy. Time to do something about it. We know that a teacher from a local school managed to rescue a bunch of kids and lead them to a nearby building where they're relatively safe and we could really use whatever they have. We could really use it, right? Wrong. Karma is a bitch, capital B. Unless you're gonna eat the kids like a barbecue dinner, do not rob that place because then you won't have any good luck. I believe in karma in this game and we don't want any part of that, I promise you guys. But we're gonna give them some of this. And a sleazy looking trader carrying an equally scruffy bag on his shoulder paid us a visit. Okay, this is the cat scenario. Definitely do not want cats in the bunker. I think the cat makes Ted sick because he's allergic to it. And then the cat eventually brings in more cats and it's not a good time. It's not the kind of cats that you want inside. Timmy's back. Yes, 28 days later and Timothy is back. What did you bring back, my guy? He brought back two water and another radio. He brought back back-to-back -back radios. What a guy. 
like, can he be the president of the United States? Like, he would be so clutch at it. Okay, you get that. And then what's the scenario? A note on our doorstep took us all by surprise. Okay, it's the beginning of the twin ending again. We have soup to spare, so we'll get that started. But I definitely need the wheels or whatever we need for that ice cream truck. That is the main goal of today's episode. I don't care about getting a good ending. I just want to make sure that we get something for this truck right here. We need something. Oh, here we go. Day 29. During our last expedition, we finally approached that nearby vehicle. It was an ice cream truck, missing wheels, and a few other crucial components. The outside was rusty and a little burnt up. If we hope to ever drive away from here, we should scavenge for something to reinforce it. Anything we should grab for this little supply run? Um, flashlight or axe? I feel like, I feel like when you search for something, you should bring the flashlight, right? Or should you bring the axe so you can chop stuff down? Like if there's like a padlock on something, you can use the axe and just go boom, boom, boom. I don't know. You know what? I'm going to go with the axe the first time. And then next playthrough, if they ask us this again, I'll go with the flashlight. And then we'll go with the gas mask for a third run. So this time we're going to use the axe. Let's see what kind of part we get. Day 30, guys. 30 days in and we got another part, I believe. What did we get though? We chop some wood into pointed sticks and attach those to the vehicle. Sharp, efficient, and also helpful in collecting trash along the way. This was a fun project. We accidentally chopped up the axe handle as well. Not sure how, but it's all part of the installation now. Okay, let's see what it looks like. All Ooh, right. It's like an armored vehicle. But yeah, guys, this looks sick. Okay, so we need wheels. I'm pretty sure we're going to need an engine and maybe some fuel. So I'd say at least three more parts. So we got that for this playthrough. I don't think I can get every single item in like multiple playthroughs like in one episode. Because each run takes like 30 minutes. And I probably need like three more things at least. So that's going to be like what? 30, 60, 90, at least an hour and a half. Yeah, we'll split these up into different playthroughs. But now let's focus on getting an ending. Day 32. What's that glowing in your pocket, Timmy? Oh no, mutated ants! Their terrifying little mandibles almost gave Dolores a heart attack. She wants them out, but Timmy says it's the beginning of an atomic ant farm. One of them has to have it their way, but who? Okay, so we got this scenario last episode. I said I was gonna side with Dolores because I wanted to get an ending, but I promised you guys that we would go with Timmy the next time, so it popped up. So let's see what kind of ant farm we're gonna have inside the shelter. I don't see any ants. Timmy was allowed to keep his atomic ant farm to the detriment of our supply stash. The little mutants scattered, devoured a whole can of soup, and escaped under the cover of night. We're relieved. They could have eaten us instead. Okay, well, at least we dodged a bullet, kind of. But since you messed up, Timmy, you're going to go outside and bring all those supplies back and more. Oh, no! There was an axe on his face! That was my guy, guys. Ah, oh, hear that? It sounds like a herd of animals are stampeding just above our heads across what used to be our beautiful lawn. They are not getting away with that. It might be a perfect opportunity to get some fresh food. Who should go hunting? Mary Jane, you need to learn. You know, you're almost 18. You need to learn how to hunt. Every young kid learned how to hunt. Oh, damn, she's dead, I think. I think she didn't come back. Well, if we've ever had a bad idea, this excursion definitely makes the top five list. Everything was going well until we realized it's a velociraptor herd or something that looked like one. Even if they weren't, their hunger for flesh was equal to that of the dinosaurs. Our expedition discovered this the hard way. So does that mean that they actually ate her alive? That is horrible. That is morbid. Okay, Ted, you're gonna go with the gas mask and you're gonna get out of here. Those velociraptors, they just ripped her apart. Day 45, guys. No food. This is not good. All she has is water, but at least she'll survive five more days without food. And a sleazy looking trader came again asking for soup. Do I look like I have soup? Is this a charity? Because when I'm looking around, we have no freaking food. I have to eat my own shit just to satisfy myself, okay? Day 46. A group of doctors knocked on our door today requesting some supplies that would be helpful in refilling their first aid kits. We didn't doubt they were the real deal for a second. They did have lab coats and everything. Shall we help them? Okay, you know what? I might have to make a very clutch choice here and I'm gonna give them some water. And they just took it and then they left. Thanks, assholes. Yes, Ted came back. Day 49, so freaking clutch. He brought back some soup too. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. He brought back two water, two food, and he lost the gas mask. But you know what? Thank you so much for bringing that. They can survive one more day, right? You know what? I'm not even gonna risk it. Just take it. Just take it all. And the trash can is becoming full of empty soup cans. Okay. So if we don't empty that, there's going to be all these radioactive bugs and they're just going to cause a mess and we definitely don't want that. So day 50, 
Day 50, and we're still going strong on Sarabama with the two parents. Privacy is a forgotten, impossible concept now, so even if you wanted to clear the air, well, even the most private conversations are guaranteed an unwanted audience. Dolores and Ted could really use a quiet moment to talk in peace. How about a picnic in a nearby park? Well, they're the only two here, so unless you think the spirit of Timmy and Mary Jane are listening, you'll be alright. But whatever, you guys had a nice date at a park. You guys happy? They look mad at each other. Nothing like a romantic outing to a ruined post-apocalyptic park, complete with giggling and whispering sweet nothings over a shared can of tomato soup. At least that's how Ted remembers it. Dolores is unwilling to comment, but they both feel better today, so clearly whatever happened has lifted their spirits. Okay, that's good. That's all that really matters, right guys? And I don't have a harmonica, so I can't do whatever that is. Day 54. The last time we went out on an expedition, we noticed an abandoned tank just sitting there out in the open. It looks damaged, but it may contain useful supplies. Shall we send someone to investigate? Okay, this is bad because usually the tank explodes and kills whoever checks it out. But I'm very desperate. I'm very desperate for supplies. So I might have to make a clutch decision here. Dolores is sick. She's on her last legs, kinda. I think I'm gonna make the call, guys. But I won't be surprised if she dies in an explosion. The end. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. How did they die? What happened? Oh, we got a gun? Oh, too many days without water? No, you freaking pussy! Ah! Just survive one more day without water, you freaking pussies! Oh, please tell me that I at least armored up that truck. Please tell me. If you had to beat it, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Because I got the sticks on the truck and we, like, pimped it out a little bit. If it's not armored out. Ooh, I'm gonna be so mad. Okay. Yes! So it's good. But if you guys want to see me try to get more parts for this truck in another episode, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is dead. Dude!